What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be telling you why it is so important that you should be changing your own oil. I'm going to be going step by step to show you exactly what you should be looking for, hopefully to save you from catastrophic failure of your engine. All the tools and the parts that I use in this video will be listed in the description down below, so make sure you go ahead and check that out. If you haven't done so already, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. And for more Land Cruiser and Overland content, don't forget to subscribe. For this video, I'm going to be using my Toyota Land Cruiser, just so happens it's ready for another oil change. Now let's take a look inside the engine bay. The two parts that you want to look for in whatever car you're doing an oil change on is, first of all, you've got your oil cap and you've got your engine oil dipstick. Those are the only two pieces you'll need from the top of the vehicle. A couple important tools that you'll need to get the old oil out of your vehicle is a ratchet, some sockets, oil filter wrench and obviously a mat and something to drain the used oil in. We've also got the brand new oil filter and oil. Now notice I'm using a genuine Toyota oil filter along with some quality Mobile One full synthetic motor oil. This is one of the reasons why you want to be doing your own oil changes is so that you can monitor what type of parts go into your vehicle. Now for me, since I take this car pretty much anywhere, I want to put the best parts along with the best oil in the car. Now before you start changing the oil, you want to make sure that you warm up your car. Drive it around the block for five minutes or so, you should be okay. Now the reason for that is that warm oil does a far better job of getting all the contaminants out of the oil pan as opposed to cold oil that's been sitting overnight. Obviously for a normal car, you want to use a jack and jack stands to lift up the front of the vehicle so you can get underneath but because this is Land Cruiser we're just gonna slide underneath let's take a look so another reason why I like to do my own oil changes is it gives you a chance to look underneath and see if there are any oil leaks not only from the oil pan and the engine itself, but from like the CV axles, the front differential, the transmission, all that. Just kind of a quick glance over. Um, I can't even uh, recall how many times that I caught something leaking like the transfer case or, or the transmission while I was just doing a basic oil change. So make sure you, you know, kind of just look through. Um, mine looks okay so far. So next you want to locate your oil pan. For mine, it is right here, and the oil pan drain is right here. So let's uh, loosen that guy and uh, see what the motor oil looks like. Now on the Land Cruiser, it's a 14 mil socket. As with most Toyotas, depending on what vehicle you're doing it on, doing the oil change on, it might be a different size. Now notice the oil drain plug came off relatively easy. It didn't take like a breaker bar or anything like that. That's exactly how it should be. Um, if it's on there too tight, you run the risk of damaging the threads, not only on the drain bolt, but also on the oil pan. And that's another headache that you do not want to have. Here's the oil. There we go. So on the oil drain bolt, there is a little paper gasket on here. Now notice that this one does not have it because most likely it's stuck on the uh, other side of the oil pan. Um, so make sure you take that out and get that guy replaced. Um, this will prevent any type of leakage from the oil drain plug itself. So if you can see, now that the oil is mostly drained out, we can trying to get that gasket I guess right there it was stuck on the back of the oil pan and make sure you get these guys out and replace them um, they don't cost very much usually the dealership that you buy the oil filter from will throw it in for free um, and make sure you get it removed from the back of the oil pan because if you double up on the gasket without knowing these guys will leak um, yeah you do not want that now another reason why you should be changing your own oil is because I've seen some crazy and uh, actually pretty creative stuff. Um, quick lube places, uh, they don't even use this, uh, the correct gasket. They use like some type of rubber uh, O-ring type of thing, or they just put a little bit of RTV and put it back in there. Um, 
over tighten it or whatever just to make it stop leaking so you can drive off but um, like literally these things cost next to nothing so um, yeah get the right part get the job done right now we're gonna put the drain bolt back in to the oil pan with the new drain bolt uh, gasket washer and you want to be careful here another reason why you should be doing this and not some you know guy at some shop is you don't want to cross thread this guy if you cross thread your oil pan it is going to be a lot of headache to retap it get the oil pan off clean all the metal shavings and all that stuff it's just not worth the hassle doing it yourself is so easy Snug is okay. So now that we got all the old oil out of the car, we can take a look and see if they are any types of uh, signs of issues for the engine. Any type of water in here could mean a blown head gasket or a leaky head gasket at least. Metal shavings could be uh, signs of uh, bearing issues. But um, in general, your oil should look more or less like this. Uh, watery, you know, not very clumpy at all. Dirty is fine. You, see, you can see how dark my engine oil is. Um, dirty is fine. Uh, slightly warm to the touch. Um, no metal shavings. I don't know if you can see that, but it's relatively just dirty old oil. Next up is changing the oil filter. Now we definitely, definitely want to change the oil filter every time we change the engine oil. The reason being is the oil filter collects all the gunk and crap that's in the oil when it's running through the engine. The oil filter has a capacity. Once it collects so much, it won't be able to accept any more garbage. And then it just flows around in your engine, destroying everything in sight. So, if you only change the engine oil, that's not going to help. You want to change your engine oil filter. Now for the Land Cruiser, luckily it is only behind this little cap right here. Other cars um, could be underneath, could be on top. You'll just have to look. So there is the engine oil filter. Now. As you can tell, uh, obviously it's a Toyota piece because I was the one that changed it last time. But when you do your own oil changes, again, it is very important to take a look if there are any leaks or if the last guy that did your oil change used a quality filter. So for getting the oil filter out, I really like this oil filter wrench. This guy, I'll link, uh, I'll have a link in the description down below, but what's nice about this guy is it grips, not only does it grip uh, really well around the oil filter itself because it's got three prongs however it's uh, uh, pretty much adjustable for any size oil filter that you might have so um, if you have a few different types of cars that use different oil filters like I do it will work for every single one of them so you only have to get one of these guys as opposed to like the set you know type ones where um, you can only use for one size so let me get this guy off take a look filter itself so now that you have the old oil filter out what you want to take a look at is reach your finger in there like so maybe your pinky because my other fingers are too fat and just see if there is any type of oil, uh, metal shavings or anything unusual in the oil filter itself mostly it'll just be a bunch of uh, old oil which is fine um, so I have nothing to worry about here but if you have metal shavings in the uh, oil filter itself then uh, you might want to look into that 
And this is the new oil filter from Toyota and this is why I love using OEM stuff. You can see that it's got this like um, shrink wrap type of stuff on there. So once you get the shrink wrap off, you know that the oil filter is sealed. There's no dust or debris that could have got in there. Um, unlike the ones that you buy off the shelf at the auto parts store, they're just kind of open. Um, the seal is already greased, so you are ready to go. We can just put this guy uh, into the Land Cruiser, and we're all good. New oil filter should just slide in very easily. Zero, next to no resistance at all. Um, if you have some type of resistance, make sure you're not cross-threading the oil filter. You should be fine. Now, these guys, the oil filters, only need to be hand tight. Do not use the wrench on these guys. If anything, use a clean paper towel because sometimes your glove is kind of oily. And um, tighten it up with your hand. As long as it's uh, snug, like that, you should be okay. Next thing you want to do is because you love your car, you want to wipe it down a little bit, take off all the, uh, the oil that spilt a little bit here and there. Um, I doubt uh, those uh, quick lube jo uh, shops will do this for you out of love. I remember taking my uh, M3 to the dealership and uh, back in the day, it was uh, E46, and um, when they changed the oil, they spilt some but they just left it, they didn't care. It's okay though, never went back again. I only went in the first place because it was included in the uh, extended maintenance thing, so whatever. Next, brake clean a little bit. Wipe it down, make sure it's not oily. Even if it's a little bit oily, you'll be fine. You know, the uh, dust and dirt from the road will dry it up real quick. It'll fall off. But you just don't want it to be like dripping oil. So, there we go. New oil filter. Now that the bottom is all tied back up, it's time to go work on the top. On the top of the car, you want to loosen oil filler cap. Now usually on the cap itself, it says what type of oil you should be using. Mine says 5W30. If yours doesn't say on the cap, you can always look in the owner's manual under schedule maintenance. It will tell you what weight oil you should be using for the climate that you're in. Funnel, we're ready to pour. So a lot of people also ask me, hey, uh, how often should I change my oil in my car? Now, to answer that question easily, uh, you should look up the owner's manual. Every owner's manual will say what your suggested oil change intervals are. Now, some of you guys will be asking, well, what mileage do you change your oil at? Because your Land Cruiser is old, it's 20 years old, and it has two, over 200k miles. Well, to be honest, I change my oil at every 3,000 miles. Why is that? Well, the oil that I put in, this Mobile One stuff, says it's good for, I don't know, 10,000 miles or 15,000 miles. Um, I just don't really believe that. I mean, sh I'm sure it does, but what will it do to the engine? Uh, in my case, because I'm saving some money changing the oil myself, I want to have the reassurance of the engine running as best as it can and for as long as it can. So on an old engine like this with higher mileage, I would recommend every 3,000 to 5,000 miles. I think on the uh, BMW that I have and uh, the uh, minivan, I do about every 5,000 miles on those guys. Um, it really depends on what type of vehicle you have. If it's slightly newer, then you can go a little bit longer. But for something this old, I usually do 3,000 miles on the uh, RX-7s that I have. Those guys are uh, those guys are a headache in itself. Um, I do it once every three, four months, or depending on how many track days I go to. Um, also, on the Land Cruiser, this guy is about seven quarts. 
Um, you know, what I usually do is when, after you fill it up uh, five quarts or so, you know, you want to measure it out before you continue pouring because that's a lot easier than um, trying to drain some of the oil out from the top. And that is also another reason why you should do your own oil changes because sometimes the guys at those shops, those oil chain shops, just don't care. They just put as much oil as they like. They think that that's supposed to go in there and um, that can cause damage to your engine. So after you put your oil filler cap back on tight, last but not least, you want to check your oil level. Basically how much oil you put into the pan, if it needs more, if it needs less, this is how you check it. You pull out the dipstick, clean it off real quick, and I don't know if it'll focus, but right here is the full mark. So we want it as, as close to the full mark as possible. Put this guy back in, and you want to do this on a flat surface. You can't do this on your driveway. Unless your driveway is really flat, then, then you're okay. Let's pull this guy out. Take a look. It looks like we are down here. So it's almost to the full mark. Um, it really depends on what you want to do. You can have it all the way to the full, but um, anywhere in between this, uh, I guess, this little mesh area would be fine as long as it's uh, above the low, which it is. So um, if you're all good, clean it back off, put the dipstick back in, and there's your oil change. And that is it for the do-it-yourself oil change. What did you think? Was it easy? Was it hard? Did I miss some stuff? Let me know in the comments down below. A couple finishing touches. Number one, make sure you go ahead and recycle your used motor oil. Uh, any auto parts store like uh, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, or Pet Boys will be able to take it free of charge. Number two, make sure you mark down the mileage that you did your oil change at and also the date so you know when to do your next oil change. I like to use these little windshield stickers. They're free from AutoZone. You just gotta ask the guy at the parts counter. If you haven't already done so, don't be shy. Make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. And for more Land Cruiser and Overland content, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.